Welcome GDLers to another edition of Scripting Adventure. This is Bruce from Barking Dog Bim and today we are going to continue developing our user interface and in this episode I will be showing you how to use the same infield to get different presentation results depending on the parameter type. Now with older objects, some of you may remember that the attributes would be scripted into the interface as their own buttons. So here we've got a pen button, a fill button. Back on this page, we've got a surface button. That's not what we do anymore because of the introduction of new interface statements. What happens now is that we have these list item fields that allow you to quickly and easily set out a lot of this stuff that you don't necessarily need a great pictorial representation for. So what I'll do, just so that you can see it, is I'll put one of these separator lines down the halfway and I'll put in a couple of items here. So I'll come back to our desk, we'll have a look at our preview. And what we want up the top here is we want to choose type and dimensions. So let's put in an outfield. Outfield, we'll call it type, type and size. Its position will be UI X1. Its Y will be zero because I want it to be a header. Because we now want to add a carriage return underneath it to shift our infields we've already created below it, we'll go UI Y equals UI Y plus, plus UI in high one plus UI carriage return. So have a look. Oops, I've missed something here. What did I miss? This should be UI Y. There we go. UI Y type and something. So this is a good opportunity to point out what happens when your outfield isn't wide enough to contain all of your text. It will give you this dot, dot, dot. So what we want is to add a width to this particular one. Now, outfields can be all over the place, so I don't necessarily need to add variables for this one. But let's make this 110 and UI out high one. Type and size. However, it's the same typeface as this. We want it to be bold. So this is where our UI style statement comes in. And the syntax for that is UI style, font size, face code. So we've got font size, zero, extra small or large. So it'll just be zero. So we'll go UI style, UI style, zero, one. And then we need to change it back afterwards. So we'll go UI style, zero, zero. There we go. We've got a bold heading for what we need. Now we'll add our line down here. I'll add a comment in here. We'll call it type and size. And down here, we want to say pen and surface, something like that, right? So we'll put in a separator. And the syntax for a separator is very similar to a line, x1, y1, x2, y2. And it gives a separator rectangle. Now, the rectangle becomes a single separator line if your x1 and X2 are the same, or your Y1 and Y2 are the same. So let's have a look. We'll go UI separator, and we'll go halfway. So halfway in the X is UI X mid. So this global size I created up here. Our Y will be zero. Our X at the bottom will be UI X mid. And our Y at the bottom will be UI Y max. Right, let's have a look. There we go. We've got our line running from top to bottom. We check. No errors were found. Good. Now, if I just make this X a bit wider at the bottom, now I've got a rectangle. Let's make it a wider again, just to make it a little bit more obvious. There we go. So it's actually a rectangle you're drawing, but when it's zero width or zero height, it just becomes a line. So that line will separate the functions of what we're doing. Now on the right side, what do we want? We want an outfield. We want to change it to bold. We'll say attributes. 
and it's not going to be x1 we need another x coordinate here so it will be ui x3 equals ui x mid plus let's say five create another one called margin so this will be the margin between our separator and the next one so we'll go ui margin and we'll say five pixels so ui x3 equals mid plus ui margin ui x pen equals ui x3 plus ui x building material equals ui x3 plus 110 and ui x surface equals ui x3 plus 110 we'll make these all the same for now so we'll need button sizes for the surface and the building material be the same they're pretty good sizes so i'll just change this because what we want is i'll just show you what i want what we want is for the right side to be lined up like that see how the right side of the pens and fills and whatnot are all lined up nicely that's what we want so to achieve that is we'll say ui x max minus ui pen wide and we'll say building material equals the same ui x max minus ui surface wide one and ui surface actually we won't need that one we'll just use the same for the building material so i'll make that surface so it's not confusing copy down our sequence of fields ui y equals ui y plus that we'll go outfield and we'll say we will say gs cont pen which is contour pen and it's not x1 it will be x3 and infield will be gs cont pen it will be x pen be ui y and it will be wide pen wide one and pen high not wide one ui pen high let's see how that looks uninitialized variable line 52 52 oops misspelt that one there we go okay let's have a look Preview, here's my contour pen. So who can guess what I forgot to do here? So I've got attributes over here, overlapping. So attributes should be X3. And I need to reset my UI Y. I can just go UI Y equals zero. And then this one equals UI Y and that should work. Here we go check no errors were found so that's my pen now what i'd like to point out here is i've used a ui infield for the pen which is the same as my ui infield for the desktop type which is the same as my ui infield for my corner radius and you can see that they are all slightly different it will automatically recognize that it's a pen and create a pen drop down list for you will automatically recognize that I have created some parameter limitations and create a drop-down list. We'll automatically know that it's a length input and if it's got limitations on it, it'll throw that up as an arrow. So same statement, same command, different results. It's always good to, to just label what you're doing here or that's the wrong word, comment what you're doing here because it's very easy to get lost in these interface scripts so that's the contour pen what's next fill type the ui x now my surface building material and fill types i'll just use the same dimensions fill type it will be x surface right ui x surface ui x max minus surface wide the width will be surface wide one and the height will be UI surface high. Preview that. There we go. So the 
right side of our button is lined up nicely. Let's check that. No errors were found. I need to fix this slight misalignment with the outfield. What is it? Outfield plus UI CTR. That looks nice. So we'll do the same for the pen. Right, so far, so good. What's next? Fill pen, that'll be one of these. So we'll copy this down. Once you get your first in place, it starts to speed up a bit. Fill pen is fill pen x3 over here. This will be fill pen. Let's have a look. There's our fill pen. They're overlapping. I don't have quite enough oomph there. So this should be, it's not high one. It is surface high is what I need to be adding here. Let's have another look. There we go. That's better spaced. No errors. Good. What's next? Back pen. So this will be another one of these. Now we're adding a carriage return under a pen. So these should actually be pen high. Contour pen. This one should be UI pen high. This one should be pen high. It is fill background pen and it's GS back pen and it's a pen and a pen. Right. Preview. There's our pen. Fill background pen. Check. No errors were found. Excellent. Notice that these are just tucked in a bit because I'm using the wrong dimensions for my page max. This should be 480, which makes the mid to 40. Now, because I've instituted this variable system where I'm using variables for my coordinates and I haven't hard coded the coordinates per each outfield and infield instance, I can just update those dimensions there, coordinates there. And there we go. It's all updated. We'll check that. No errors found. Excellent. I want that to shift over a bit too. So that is our X2 coordinate. So let's say 105. There we go. They've shifted over a bit. And I don't want that to be 10. I want that to be 0. Right. Looking good. So that's our 2D representation. So what we want at here, attributes. Let's change that. That's not really attributes, is it? Let's call it 2D representation. So let's add a separator under here and put in some 3D stuff. I'll only do two because this is, this is not how I want the interface to look. I'm just showing you the different functionalities that come up with the different infields. So because I'm calling up a fill type with this, I get a fill type input. Three representation, the X will be mid plus UI margin. The Y will be UI Y and the X will be UI max. And we'll change our UI Y to be UI Y plus pen high. That was the last thing we did plus carriage return. And this is 3D representation. Right, let's have a look. What's going on there? Item 6 is overlapping. I haven't added a UI Y here. So that's the UI Y for my separator. Let's increment that UI Y equals UI Y plus, let's just say, carriage return. There we go. That's nice. Now we want our... I won't worry about the pens. You've seen the pens. I'll do one set of this. Desktop building material override and surface. Let's do that.
Let's have a look. Preview. So we've got a bit of an overlap here. Because my outfield is too long for my infield. But you can see that my infield is a building material selection list, even though I've used the same statement. Archicad kindly recognizes that it's a building material. So I want to make that as a carriage return. So if I do some maths, I know it's terrible, right? I've got a maximum width of 480 for my canvas size, 480. My width of that is 136 minus 136 minus half, which is 240, minus my margin, which is 5, means I've got a maximum of 99 for my outfield. So I will give this outfield a width. Let's just refresh our memory as to what the inputs are. We've got an X and a Y. So notice these square brackets. Now we know square brackets means it's optional, but they've got two lots of square brackets here. So what that means in this instance is that if I start to enter inputs within the first lot of square brackets, I need to enter them all. So if I enter a width, I also need to enter a height. But then with the second lot of square brackets, it means I still don't have to enter them if I don't want to. So width and height, if I enter one, I need to enter both, but I don't need to enter a flag. So width, what do we say, 99? It'll be, let's say 38 high. Preview. There we go, we've got it wrapping. We'll check. It's overlapping just a bit, so it can't be 99. It must need to be, well, let's say 97. No errors found. And you can see it's, again, slightly out of center. Let's say we'll bring it up, say, 3. That's looking okay. All right. Now I want my override. We need to add our Y, but it'll be a add Y for a surface, this one here. We need our outfield. It looks to be of a similar length, doesn't it? Text-wise, character-wise is that. So I'll use the same statement here. And because I've now used these twice, I should probably add some variables for it. Let's see if that worked. There we go. Over our desktop surface, we'll put in our infield. It will be a, it'll be this one here, desktop override. For a checkbox, 18 times 18 is a good size. Have a look. There we go. Override desktop surface. Check it. It's overlapping. What's it overlapping? So, ah, these two are overlapping. Okay. So the height is a bit much. Let's change that high to down to 30. See if that helps. That's good. Everything looks okay. All right. Let's add another one. What are we doing this time? We are now doing our desktop surface. So we'll add another one of these. Now I'll keep it as a surface high for now and see what that looks like. Outfield. The outfield will just be a short one. So I can just use one of these and it will be desktop surface. X3, that. The infield will be a surface, which will be same as a building material, as far as dimensions are concerned, and it will be desktop surface. Let's have a look. There it is. We'll check it. It's just within our bounds, but I think that is a little bit too big of a carriage return. So instead of UI surface high, we'll just go in high one, preview, there we go, that looks better, good. Now when I turn this off, I want that to disappear, 
So that's just a simple if statement. Desktop surface, so we'll go this one here. If the desktop is not override, but in this case, we're not hiding, we're showing. So it doesn't have a not. It's if the override is checked, if it's turned on, then we do all of that. Let's have a look. There we go. There we go. Excellent. Oh, good stuff. We'll save it. So we've just been looking in our preview. Let's have a look in our actual object. There we go. It's popped up because it's in the default to show our interface. And I've got my 2D and 3D representation. And it's all looking good. And they work. Onto a pen. Let's change that. You can see it's there. Excellent. Turn that off. Turn it on, change it to a walnut, excellent. Change this to a square. So you can see it's all, what we've put onto the interface is all working. That's good. And that's just disappeared. Fantastic. However, having done all that work, given advances in the last few editions of GDL, we don't really set out our building material surface pens selection in this manner we won't have that on our first page of the interface what we'll do is we'll put it on the second page of our interface and we'll use what's called a list item so i'll wrap this one up there you now know how to use the infield for the various parameter types that will appear in your user interface and i'll see you in the next one we'll take it a bit further